For nearly five years, we followed the journey of a NASA spacecraft, OSIRIS-REx, first launched from our coast in September 2016. In December of 2018, it finally reached the asteroid Bennu. Now, Bennu is believed to be a time capsule from the birth of the solar system. A big milestone, though, came last October when OSIRIS-REx booped Bennu Boop. and collected rock and dust samples. It sounds very cute when you put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Now the NASA probe is getting ready to make the 200 million mile journey back to Earth with the sample in tow. ClickOrlando.com's Brandon Voles caught up with UCF professor Umberto Campins, a planetary scientist and asteroid expert. He's also a team member of the OSIRIS-REx mission, and let's just say <laughs> he's excited about what's coming home. Tell me about this critical part of the mission. Well, we uh, were essentially waiting until the two orbits, that of the uh, asteroid and, and that of the Earth, uh, aligned so that the, uh, the path to Earth would require the minimum energy and the minimum time. So on May 10th, we're departing Bennu. We've already done what's called the farewell tour, which is we will obtain the sample back in October, and uh, we were happy with the amount of sample and all of that. But we decided to go back and image the area where we had actually touched the asteroid to see what was, were the consequences of touching it. Because one of the things that this mission uh, wants to do is to learn enough about this asteroid. So in case we need to deflect it, this asteroid or another one like it in the future, because it would threaten Earth, we need to know how they respond to being gently pushed. The, the farewell tour told us a lot. And uh, now that the two orbits have lined up on, on May 10th, we head back to Earth. It takes about two and a half years to get back. So in September of 2023, it, the capsule will, the, the mothership will come uh, very close to the Earth's surface, to the Earth's uh, atmosphere, and shoot the capsule towards the Utah desert. Then these parachutes will deploy, it will land on the Utah desert, and then there are all these helicopters ready to go pick it up and take it to the Houston, to the Johnson Space Center in Houston, uh, where NASA will do all the curating of the sample. And something that is fascinating is that the, the Japanese space agency had a very similar mission go to another asteroid, and they brought back their sample already. We have an agreement between NASA and the Japanese Space Agency that we're going to exchange 10% of our samples. So they're going to give us 10% of what they brought back. We're going to give them 10% of what we brought back. So we're going to be able to study two asteroids for the price of one mission, thanks to international collaboration with the Japanese. We chose Bennu. Why did we choose that asteroid? It is the most potentially hazardous asteroid. That means that it is not threatening Earth right now. You talked about when you return. They do have a break, and that's when they'll be studying the collections. So what are you guys hoping to learn from those collections, and what are you most excited about when it comes to what you've already learned? Personally, the one I'm most, most excited about is that we, uh, I had predicted that this was a possibility, and when we got there, we discovered pieces of another asteroid on the surface of Bennu, completely different asteroid. A Bennu is a primitive asteroid that has not been heated very much. We basically found pieces of lava from another asteroid, asteroid Vesta, on the surface of Bennu. And that was a, a wonderful discovery. We published it. And so I am hoping that in the sample, we're going to have pieces of Bennu, mostly, but maybe some of pieces of this other asteroid where we found at least six big boulders on the surface of Bennu that came from the impact of something that came from that other asteroid that hit Bennu and broke up. Now, if OSIRIS-REx successfully comes home in September 2023, Ooh. it will have collected the largest sample returning from space since the Apollo era. That's just so fascinating. And it's not instant gratification. I think the only thing that was instant was the boop and yeah. everything else takes years to, to find and wait for. So the anticipation builds. It'll yeah. be here before you know it. All right.